And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, today we're taking a look at a game, Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle. Harry Potter, of course, is one of the most famous series of books in the world. It's incredibly popular. I was just at Universal Studios this past week and was at the Harry Potter land there at Hogwarts and Diagon Alley and wow, or Diagon Alley, and wow, just... The amount of people who do love Harry Potter are everywhere. I've read the books, I've seen the movies, I enjoy it. Maybe I'm not a super fan of the game, um, I'm a super fan of the series. It, it, it's, it's fun and interesting, but it's no surprise that a game is coming out. This is a cooperative game, so hey, you don't have to play as Voldemort. You're going to play as the good guys trying to defeat Voldemort and the other bad guys. Um, and it's a deck building style game. Let's take a look. When you start the game, you are going to open up everything in box number one. This is a game one. There is a game box for each book in the series. Two, three, you'll notice that four is the biggest, five, six, and seven. Four and seven make the most changes to the game. But everything I'm showing you here is from box one. Now what you're trying to do in the, over the course of this game is to defeat a certain number of villains. There are three villains in the first one. So one of them is drawn and placed face up. We have Crab and Goyle. They are placed here. And you are trying to stop the bad guys from getting into certain locations. So here we have Diagon Alley and the Mirror of Erised. Now, folks, I am not a Harry Potter fanatic, so there is a good chance I will pronounce some Harry Potter stuff wrong. And I apologize for that, although I take some joy in it. Uh, each person is going to pick one of the four main characters of the series. Well, I guess Neville's a kind of a main character. Um, you're going to pick one of these characters. They don't have a special ability, but they will be replaced as the games go by, and some of them do have special abilities. Each doe gets their own custom deck. So, for example, here is Harry's deck, which includes the invisibility cloak, some spells, his owl, while if we look at Hermione's deck, she has a cat and also some spells and things. So you're going to shuffle these. Now, in the beginning of each player's turn, when it's your turn to go, you'll turn over the, the top Dark Arts card, or you're going to do whatever the location says. And this one says, each turn reveal one Dark Arts card. These cards can do various things. For example, this one here, all heroes lose one health and cannot draw extra cards this turn. Uh, maybe this one here says, add one control to the location. This is what you're trying to stop. There are little control tokens. Each location has a certain amount of tokens before it's controlled by the villains. This one has four. And so we would place one there. Or here, the active hero, the person whose turn it is, loses one health and discards a card. Each player has a board in front of them where they will keep track of their health. They will also keep track of their attack power and the influence that they have to spend that turn. A player will have five cards, possibly, in their hand. And they can play these cards, which will give them different things. Here they give you money or influence. Um, here you can choose one. Do I want to gain two or do I want to let all heroes gain one? And if someone else gains something on their turn, they're just going to put it there and store it. At the end of your turn, all your stuff is gone, but anything you got on other players' turn will stay there. So you're going to be using the influence to buy more cards. Over here on the side of the board are more cards that you can buy. For example, I can buy this uh, Quidditch gear, which gives me one attack and gives me one health back. Or I can take the Golden Snitch, which gives me two influence, and I get to draw a card. Or if I have enough money, I can get Dumbledore, which gives all heroes an attack, a money, and a health, and draw a card. Just everybody gets that. That's great. But he costs eight, so he's going to be pretty expensive. So players can buy these when you buy a card. It will go into a discard pile. All the cards you play go into a discard pile, and at the end of your turn, uh, you will draw five new cards. If you run out of cards, you will shuffle your discard pile into your draw pile. So you're making your own deck. Everyone's going to start with a slightly modified deck over everyone else, but as time goes by, I may have the Sorting Hat in my, in my deck, or the, the Sendo spell. Now, attack. 
I'm using these coins to buy cards, the attack powers which are going to use to attack villains. Each turn, villains' special abilities are going to go off. So, for example, here, Crab and Goyle, every time a Dark Arts event or villain causes you to discard a card, you also lose a health. But once I get five attack on these guys, they're discarded. We defeated them, and all heroes draw a card. There's other people in here. Every turn, the active hero loses a hit point. Each time we add a uh, villain control to a location, the active hero loses two hit points. But when I beat Malfoy, then we discard a villain control from a location. If I defeat this guy here, everyone's going to gain a coin and a health. And once you defeat all three villains, once you defeat a villain, a new one is brought out. Once you defeat all three villains, then you've won the game. However, if this is filled with control markers, then we go to the next location. If that location is filled with control markers, then the bad guys win. Everyone loses together. And once you go through all the Dark Arts cards, you'll shuffle them and make a new pile of cards that you're going to be going through. So players are going to be working together, trying to defeat the villains as quickly as they can. If you do beat the bad guys, then you can open box two. And slight spoilers here, each new box comes with a new set of rules and new things that you'll be able to do. Now, usually what they will do is they will add more items to the deck. So, for example, this one adds some of the Weasleys and other things to the deck of cards you can buy. It will add more Dark Arts event cards, and it will add more villains. And that's going to make the number of villains you have to go through bigger. It will also add a whole new set of locations, which will replace the locations you have. And you notice that the last location here, you're drawing two Dark Arts cards per turn. And sets 3, 4, 5, and 6 will each add more things. I'll let you discover those as you go. But these cards are going to get better and better. The villains are going to get nastier and nastier. And a few other minor rules variations will come. Now you might wonder why you have health here. Well, the fact is, if you run out of health, you'll get your health back. You're just stunned. But you'll lose half your cards. And you will also add a control token here to a location. So losing your health can be a very bad thing. So either you're going to uh, defeat all the villains, and sometimes you'll notice there's three spots as the game goes by. There'll be more and more villains available at any given point in time. Or, or you're going to have all the locations, and you, you start out with only two in book one, but more locations will come as time goes by. And if all the locations are gone through, then the villains win. Now this game is kind of a story-based game, so you'll notice there was seven boxes, and I didn't really want to spoil them, so I showed you the second one. The rules themselves say, hey, if you're experienced, you can start with boxes one, two, and three, which I did. There's not a lot of differences from what I showed you. Box three doesn't add much more. Box four adds some changes to the game, but not, again, I think an expert player could start at one through seven, really, but that would be a lot. And the game does get longer each one you play because more villains are at it, more good cards. Yes, everything's more powerful, so you can lose faster and you can win faster, um, but at the same time, it can draw the game out. I, because there's this whole spoiler thing, I mean, it's pretty easy if you want to know who's in each of the boxes, just based if you've read the books, you're going to know what new characters were added in this book. Oh, well, then they're probably going to show up in in that box in the set. And that's pretty much the, the, the truth of it. And um, in the rule book itself, I really like, this is the rule book for the game. And at the very end, you can see spots here to put all the little rules packets. Rules two is gone because I was showing it to you, but three, four, five, six, seven. And I, I do like that. Again, you can see each of these rules packets is pretty small. They don't add a lot of, a lot of confusing things. Um, Four is probably the most interesting change. Well, four and, like I said, four and seven are probably the most interesting changes to the game. I like the game. It's nothing that's really mind boggling new. This is very similar to a popular deck building game called Ascension. And Ascension, you had two currencies. You had attack and you had influence to buy cards. And this one, you kind of did the same thing. Here, you have a countdown, which is the location. You have bad cards that are showing up and, and hitting you. If there's anything that's different and unusual about this game, it might be the fact that there are a lot of cards that when you play them, you help other people out. This is definitely a game where they were trying to say, hey, we work together 
And so they do that, and this card will heal someone else, and this card lets other people draw things. And so I like that aspect. I mean, the whole story of Harry Potter was Harry Potter and his friends, and they work together to stop he who must not be named. So overall, I, I, I think the game is enjoyable. I think a lot of people are going to like it. The flavor of Harry Potter, I played it with a few Harry Potter fans, and they were shouting the names of the spells out gleefully. I um, don't know as much about these spells. To me, you just add us to the end of something, you know. Lift us boxes, and that's the name of a spell. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of, a lot of thought put into these. But anyhow, I, I, I think the game is enjoyable. It, it's not um, groundbreaking, but I think a lot of people will probably want to jump into it, and they'll probably want to play through it, and there's a lot of replayability. Even if you beat, let's say, seven, you could play seven again and again and again, because you're not going to beat it often, I don't think. It is pretty hard to win that. Uh, if there's anything I don't like about the game, I would say that, that sometimes the randomness was annoying. Like, oh, I, I have some cards. These cards let me draw more cards. And you flip over to dark cards. No one can draw extra cards this turn. Yay. All that work I did was gone. And sometimes, you just, just, sometimes the bad stuff that happens to you, you're like, well, nothing I could have done to stop that. Or, oh, I bought this card and I've never got to use it. That happens in a lot of deck builders. But this one, the luck does seem a little bit higher maybe than normal. I do think this will work well for families. I think people are going to like it. It uses stills from the shows. And while I'm not usually a big fan of stills from shows, or from the movies, I mean, um, they, they don't look that bad here. The whole thing has a good look to it. And I think Harry Potter fans will be pleased. And I think gamers will be pleased that it's not really a garbage game. It's quite a nice little deck building game. So that's Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle. Dice Tower Judgment. 10 points for Slytherin. Approved! Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Boop. Boop.